Hello and welcome. You're tuned into to Iron Africa. I'm Rochelle Ferguson. Be hey, These are the top stories. Police cast with uh, protesters for a second day in the Nigerian capital. Demonstrators are demanding the release of a Shiite leader. We cross live to our correspondent Sam Olukuya in Abuja for the very latest. In Cameroon, a local official says some 200 people have fled unrest in the country's English-speaking southwest region. And since taking on the country's top job, Ethiopia's new Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed attempts to steer his nation out of political and social turmoil. We bring you a report from our correspondents on the ground. We begin in the Nigerian capital, Abuja, where uh, police have for a second day fired tear gas and arrested protesters demanding the release of a Shiite leader. Ibrahim Zaki Zaki has been in jail without charge for over two years. The head of the Islamic movement of Nigeria was taken into custody back in December 2015. That was following deadly clashes between police and his followers. Well, here's what the uh, group's youth leader had to say today. They were beating me with a stick, trying to arrest me, but people came up and helped me out and I left. So they beat a lot of people, including female. That you can see the level of tyranny and oppression. Female and children were beaten and were taken by the police. A teenager, Khadija now she was, there is a, a lady called Khadija. She is 12 years old. The police beat her and they took her away today here in Bega. So nobody knew her way about. Well, for the very latest on this, let's uh, cross to our correspondent, Sam Olukuya, who's uh, standing by in Abuja. I mean, Sam, uh, good evening to you firstly. What's the latest you can tell us about these clashes in Abuja? Well, we, we've seen uh, two days of uh, violence between uh, the police and uh, the members of the Shia movement. And uh, what we know that is that more than 100 people have been arrested, mainly from the Shia movement. They were actually joined by other uh, human rights groups who, who are in support of them. And the Shia movement said at least 30 of their members are missing. Some newspaper reports say that up to seven of their members have, have died in the course of this uh, protest. I mean, Sam, can we outline for, for people who, who maybe haven't been following this why protesters are so angry? Well, this issue I mean, it's, it's been a running battle between the Nigerian government and the Shia movement. Uh, it came to a head in 2015 when there was a violence between the military and the Shia movement. And a number of Shia members were killed and their leader, El Zaki, and his wife were arrested. That was December 2015. And in 2016, they got a, a court order asking the government to release them. But up till this moment, the government has not uh, released uh, El Zazaki or his, or his wife. And this has really angered the members of the Shia movement that the government has violated the rights of uh, their leader. Also, we've seen quite some oppression of their members. They are not allowed to hold their normal demonstration, which they normally hold every year. This has been banned. The, the membership of the group has also been, been banned. So what we are seeing essentially is like uh, this group, they are trying to fight back to say they are entitled to some, uh, to some rights and, and some dignity. OK, Sam uh, Olukoya for us uh, in Abuja. Thank you. Next, on the sidelines of the 2018 Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa has met with the UK's Prime Minister Theresa May and the Queen. Well, meanwhile, Ramaphosa has appointed a team of business and finance experts to scour the globe for $100 billion in investment to boost his country's ailing economy. Well, political uncertainty damaged business confidence during the nine-year presidency of Ramaphosa's predecessor, Jacob Zuma. Here's uh, President Ramaphosa speaking earlier. We are trolling, are going to troll the whole world right from Africa, Asia, Europe and the Americas, both North and South, to try and campaign for investments that will come to South Africa. As we are proceeding on our route of uh, building more confidence in our country, in our economy, and uh, coming here, participating in uh, the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting uh, is an added uh, boost for us. 
The Cameroon next, where according to a local official, some 200 people have fled unrest in the country's English-speaking southwest region. Now, the official says the group, which includes women and children, have now arrived in the town of Mbanga, where they're being registered. France 24 Simon Harding has the latest. A rush to escape the violence. Over 200 people poured into the littoral region of Cameroon, escaping rebel groups in the west of the country. Here in Mbanga, many families are being registered with the help of local organisations, which provide food and shelter. According to the first statements, they heard the gunshots. They got scared, they panicked, and then they fled. Mainly, we've welcomed a lot of children and women, but there were also a few men who came with them. Local communities have been caught in the middle of an Anglophone uprising in the western regions of Cameroon, which have been met by brutal resistance from government forces. The rebels want to create a new nation, which they have named as Ambazonia, Long-standing feelings have been marginalised and shunned by the Francophone community. The unrest slowly escalated into a bloody armed conflict. The southwest population are living in fear, fear and trauma. Gunshots, even those who have never heard gunshots before, are running away. There are constant gunshots. And actually, people are now living in fields, in the bush. Why? because they're running away from the clashes between the rebels and the army. Anglophones make up 20% of Cameroon's 23 million population. In recent months, more and more separatist groups are starting to challenge government forces. New presidential elections are due to be held in Cameroon at the end of 2018. Now, since taking on the country's top job, Ethiopia's new Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, has been uh, holding public meetings in a bid to steer his country out of political and social turmoil. Well, Abiy Ahmed comes from the Aromia uh, region. That's the largest hit by social unrest. His appointment, though, has raised hopes there of change to come. Our correspondent sent us this report. A standing ovation in the packed Ambo University Stadium. New Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed couldn't have dreamed of more for his first appearance in Oromia, his native region. The Oromos have been seeking better political representation for years. We will build bridges with the new generation to write a new chapter of our history. The secret of this success is to work hard and to stay united. The dreams of Oromo residents became a reality when one of their own was promoted to the country's top job. This childhood friend remembers Abiy Ahmed displaying leadership qualities as early on as primary school. Very early on, he had a habit of spending time with elders and speaking with them like a mature adult. He also talked to my father. At 92 years old, the new prime minister's father is well known in the community. He is Muslim like 90% of the population here. He was a good child. He used to learn the Quran. He's also known for having reconciled Muslims and Christians. He's done a lot of good things. In 2007, the Beshasha church was rebuilt after an arson amid community tensions. Abiy Ahmed, whose mother is Orthodox, managed to bring the two communities together. Despite challenges awaiting him, residents of his birth region want to believe he can do the same at the national level. More than anything, we hope he can bring peace, equality amongst people and religions in the region. Another challenge for the new prime minister will be to end the state of emergency. Established mid-February, it has already led to the arrest of nearly a thousand people. Tanzania's award-winning music star Diamond Platinums has been uh, briefly detained by police after posting video clips judged indecent by the authorities. Now, the 28-year-old, whose real name is Nasib Abdul, was detained after sharing the clip on Instagram, which showed him kissing a girl. And another local musician known as Nandi was also detained for posting a video clip. Last month, the government uh, imposed licence fees on bloggers and threatened to prosecute internet users who post hate speech or indecent content. 
The annual Paris Art Fair is a major event on the global art calendar. Over 900 participants took part at this time, including the Kenyan painter and photographer Evans Imbugia. Now, the artist's work encompasses a clever use of colour, light and patterns, capturing two performing dancers. Here's what uh, the artist had to say. Create uh, prints out of... Uh, pictograms and signs around me, you know, urban signs, which I create a motif that's on the background, and then I paint my, my portrait on these perspex using oil paint. And it's, the, um, it's when I put these two uh, materials together that there's this transparency, there's this light that comes in. The people who I paint tend to disappear into the background, and the background seems to be dressing up my people who are, you know, dancing. The Iron Africa team is back in 45 minutes' time. Do join us then. Up next, uh, more international headlines. Stay tuned. Infras 24 nos esforzamos por brindar la mejor información hecha por periodistas de Latinoamérica y del resto del mundo. France 24, c'est l'info mondiale, partout, toujours à portée de clic. We look at how technology is shaping the future and we show you the latest gadgets you can soon get your hands on. نقدم لكم الاقتصاد بطريقة مختلفة، نبسط المفاهيم والمصطلحات كي تكتمل الصورة لديكم. Aquí puedo hablar de medio ambiente, no solo de los problemas que afectan nuestro planeta, sino también de iniciativas y soluciones que a veces no tienen espacio en televisión. La différence sur France 24, c'est l'idée du reportage, nos grands reportages, vous ne les verrez nulle part ailleurs.